Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today, we're gonna be doing a couple things in this video. The first of which is we're going to be testing out these Sargent Art watercolors that I got for $5 from the Dollar Tree. We'll be doing a variety of tests, and in that, we're gonna be doing some comparison. So I'm gonna compare the $5 set to the $1 set that's also available at the Dollar Tree. And then I already have a set of Sargent Art watercolors, so I'm gonna compare these two to make sure they're the same quality and same types of paints that are in them. And finally, I will be testing these against a variety of different watercolors that I already know and like, so that we can see the general quality, the pigmentation, and how they move. In addition to the testing, I'm also gonna throw in a tutorial on how to paint my favorite flower, which is Snapdragons, in a super simple watercolor way. Let's get started. If your Dollar Tree has recently become the five quarter or more store, kind of like mine has where they've increased the prices plus added some higher priced items, then you're gonna be able to find these Sargent Art watercolors for $5. The set comes in a plastic case with 48 different colors in it and it does include a brush in it. On first impression, this packaging, those little bubbles and each little dollop of color looks so enticing and you just absolutely do want to paint with it but you are gonna notice a couple things. One is that the palette itself, it doesn't feel too sturdy. You might also notice that even though there are 48 colors, a lot of these are really similar. Do you really need that many colors? I mean, let's be real, you can never have too many colors, but would it be better to have fewer colors and better quality than 48 mediocre quality ones? As I mentioned before, I had already owned a set of the Sargent Art watercolors just in a smaller package, but it's in more or less the same type of packaging. And almost one of the very first things that this set did was lose its lid. I mean, I still have it, but it doesn't attach on there well. And you don't see this here, but a little bit later in the testing, yes, the lid just kind of pops off and it's not super sturdy. Also, looking at this Sargent Art palette that I already had, you can see that some of the colors look like they correspond to colors in the set of 48. So these might be the very same paints, just with more colors. And if they are the same colors, this is a great deal, because I actually bought the Sargent Art ones I have from a different art supply store for about five or six dollars. So for more with less colors. As far as other options for watercolors at the Dollar Tree, you can also find this $1 palette. And I have done some other painting with this. You can see you get less colors, but you do get larger rounds of it. So in theory, you might get more paint, although you'll see in a bit, these are not necessarily great quality. And the paintbrush that comes with these is one of those paintbrushes that comes with the thick, stiff plastic bristles that are just almost unusable. Whereas the one in the $5 palette isn't a great paintbrush, but it's definitely a step up from the $1 one. The very first thing I wanna do with all three of these sets is just very quickly kind of swatch all the different colors that come in the palettes. That way we can kind of form initial impressions on how much pigment and how they move in general. In order to test these well, I will be spraying all of these first in order to give them the best chance, letting them soak for about 30 seconds and then going with the swatching. The $1 set you can see lacks pigment in a lot of the colors, although there are a couple colors where you get some decent pigmentation, but these are really chalky and more schmeary. They feel more like a spread rather than a paint. Also, one thing that really drives me crazy about this palette is the order that they set the colors out in. It doesn't make any sense. These should kind of go with each other instead of just skipping around. The other test I'm gonna do with these three sets is I'm going to pre-wet an area and then I'm going to drop some of the colors in just to see how they move. And you can see these ones, they just kind of like separate and settle, which is not typically how I like my watercolors to react. I want there to kind of be a nice dispersion of the color, but you can't expect that much from $1 watercolor paint. So I guess they perform about as well as expected. I will be revisiting these in a little bit once everything is dried because I want to compare all of these together once dried. Moving on to the Sargent Art set that I'd already purchased for about $5. There are 18 colors in this one. And if in the initial pictures of this, you were thinking these look darker than the other ones, that's because the other ones hadn't been wet. So I wanted to wait before I kind of formed any opinions. When we do our quick swatch, you can see these definitely have more pigment in them and they have better coverage. These also feel more like normal watercolors. They are chalkier than normal watercolors, but in general, as far as budget watercolors go, these are much more like actual watercolors than the $1 set. Similar to the $1 set though, again, I do not understand the order they put the colors in. Why not put them in an order that makes more sense? 
Again, I dropped these in some pre-wet areas and you can see these do kind of disperse more and they do act a little more like normal watercolor, but they also immediately separate even with more granulating colors that often takes a second for that to actually happen with normal watercolors. So in my initial swatching with this, are these decent paints? Yes, but you can definitely tell they're not high quality paints. And finally, moving on to the star of the video, or the one that we're here to test, the $5 set available from Dollar Tree of Sargent Arts 48 watercolors. You're probably going to be able to tell as we swatch that there's going to be similar pigmentation to the ones that I just swatched that were Sargent Art. We're gonna do a more direct comparison of this in a little bit, but in general, just testing this out, I'm getting the impression these are the same paints. You just get more of them with more colors. In this swatch, it does become more apparent how many colors are so similar that they're basically the same color and also how some of them really lack pigment. There are a few that are really good. Check out that one blue, one of the yellow greens. I kind of feel like they could have actually built a better palette with maybe a better casing on it with a few more of the select and good pigments that are in here. Overall, very similar impression. Decent paints, not great. Although I do have to admit that the way these are laid out and just how many different colors there are just make my brain really happy, especially since they actually follow an order that kind of makes sense to me. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty of this actual test and comparison. What I've done here is made a little grid for swatching. You can see across the top the different brands that I'm going to be testing. The $5 Dollar Tree Sargent Art, the Normal Sargent Art, the $1 Dollar Tree, Koi. And then I'm also gonna be testing my own palette here just because I know a lot of people ask me about comparisons. So I wanna put that in here. And for the $5 Sargent Art one, and then the one that I'd already had of Sargent Art, I was trying to match these up and they do look a little different in the pans. And I think that's mainly my fault because I've kind of dripped things on them and things like that. So you might occasionally see me recut out a piece of paper and then re-swatch for either the $5 or the Sargent one because I want to make sure that I am comparing apples to apples and actually picking the same colors when I accidentally pick the wrong one. And the different palettes that I'm using might not have the same types of colors that I initially kind of was swatching for the other ones, but I'm going to do my best to kind of compare similar colors in each of the palettes, but they might not be the exact same colors. What I'm testing for here is how they move and their general pigmentation. Specifically, as I'm laying each of these colors down, what I want to do is put a stripe of that really bright color and then I want to wash my brush and just pull that down so I can see a bit of a gradient. One of the things that I look for in watercolor is a nice smooth transition or a really interesting transition where it's going to have some interesting textures or a nice smooth transition. I also wanna make sure that I'm testing a color from kind of all around the color wheel from each of the palettes because sometimes I find that a palette might be really good in either the red range or the blue range, but it's really weak in other areas. And so by testing this variety of colors, this is gonna help us get an overall idea of the general quality as a whole of the sets. A few things I want you to notice as I'm swatching these colors out because this starts to kind of be apparent as we go through. The Sargent ones look like they have really good pigment when they are wet and then as they dry that pigment definitely settles down and this is true for most watercolors. It dries lighter than when it's wet. However, it's kind of exponential with the Sargent Art ones. You can see how much more it settles out than the Koi or the Unicorn Food palette. They do soften in color but they stay pretty vibrant. Another thing you can notice is that that middle row, which is the $1 Dollar Tree one, notice how that stripe, it never really bleeds. It just sinks and then that's where it is. So it does not act like watercolor really at all. Or at least if you're familiar with watercolor, how you would expect it to be. Again, it's a $1 palette, so I can't fault it too much. The other thing you can notice is that the Sargent set compared to the other two more normal watercolor sets. When you look at that transition, yes, at first it makes a really nice transition on the Sargent ones, but then eventually it kind of bleeds across the whole thing. So you get less of a nice gradient and you're not gonna get some of those interesting gradient type effects with watercolor. And it's also more prone to back runs. I have nothing wrong against back runs. However, some people really don't like them and this one is a lot harder to not get back runs because it just really wants to form them. You can get them on any color that you paint with with watercolor, but these just have more of a natural tendency towards that. 
After doing the comparison swatching, let's review and actually talk about my general thoughts on the $5 watercolor palette from Dollar Tree. Is this worth $5? Yes, I, th I think this is worth $5. You could definitely do some good painting with it. And as a matter of fact, we're gonna be painting some flowers in just a moment. I think this is a great palette for beginners or watercolor curious people who may be on a budget or don't wanna spend a bunch of money on something you don't know if you're going to like. I think this could give you the watercolor bug. However, for experienced watercolor painters or anybody who's worked with anything other than something like this, you're going to be disappointed by some of the effects and the pigmentation. Not to mention a more practical thing, which is that case, that 48 colors, this is a huge case. You're gonna need a lot of storage space. And then it's not a very functional palette case. Most of my other palettes that come in kind of a tin or a plastic thing that is meant to be mixed in are actually way more usable than this larger one because they have better dedicated cells. Yes, you can mix in these, but those little bubbles, I don't know, something about them is just a little harder to use. And it's definitely less durable because it breaks off really easily. So if you do give this to kids, don't expect this to stay nicely packaged for a very long time. But that's okay, even without the lid, these are going to stay good for a really long time. Would I straight up recommend these to beginners or somebody who's maybe actually seriously interested in learning watercolor? Probably not. That is unless they are limited by budget. If you're limited by budget, these are a great option. However, something like a Koi or something like my palette or even a Winsor Newton very basic palette are going to have more of those watercolor effects that are really going to make you fall in love. One more thing about the $1 palette though, the paint scratches off once it dries, so this one I definitely don't recommend. Although that being said, all we've done is swatch. Let's actually paint with them because that's gonna be the best test because more than likely you're not gonna sit down just to swatch your watercolors. You're actually going to want to paint with them. So let's paint those Snapdragons that I talked about before. To start painting these Snapdragons, you're going to need to mix up a color that you want your Snapdragons to be. I'm gonna be painting these technically three times so we'll play around with some different colors. I'm starting up by kind of mixing up my own pinkish red color. And when we're painting a Snapdragon flower, we're going to be painting these kind of oscillating around a center stem. So you want to think of some of the flowers as facing to the left, some facing straight on, and some facing towards the right. Snapdragons, the front of them kind of reminds me of a little mouth. So the top part of them, you're going to actually kind of make the top lip where you're actually going to get that little peak in the center. If it's facing to the left, you want to make the left side shorter and then drag out the right side, that'll give it a little more perspective. And then that bottom lip you're gonna place in kind of like a bottom lip, but then give it kind of like a bed skirt or a little ruffle at the bottom of it. As you move up the stalk, in general, they're going to get smaller and we're going to kind of alternate the direction these are facing so we can kind of fit them together. As further testing, one of the other things I want to do in addition to placing this pink color down, is I'm gonna paint a couple of these, let them sit for a second, then I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna pick up a lighter color and just drop that in right around where that mouth opening would be. Flowers often have some variation in the colors that are seen within them. And that's one of the reasons why people like to paint flowers with watercolor because you can create kind of these natural flows of pigment together that mimic that really well. I make as many of the mouths as I want to going up that stem. And as I'm moving along, once the main mouth part has kind of settled, if they are facing over to the left or to the right, I'm gonna give them that bit of a trumpet end that's reaching towards the center stem or where the center stem will be so that you can tell it's more of a profile view of the flower. As I move up the stem, again, I'm getting a little bit smaller. And then also a lot of times in a stalk of Snapdragons, you're actually going to see that towards the top, there are a bunch of unopened ones. So I'm going to kind of hint to the fact that some of these are gonna bud with some little swipes. I'm gonna speed up the next part of this because I've already talked through how I actually paint the flower shapes themselves. And I wanna add in a couple of these so that we can see some different colors in work as well as I think it just makes this look prettier. So I'm gonna be repainting these flowers on either side with different colors. And then as these kind of sit a bit this is going to allow them to dry a bit before we go back in to do that center stock. Sometimes I get questions on why don't you just do the center stock to start with? And you can, you absolutely can. However, you're not going to be able to preserve the nice colors, like a really bright pink with that white showing underneath. If we were to paint that stem first, 
because if we wanted to place a flower there, we would be placing it on top of the green and we would see that through. If you feel more comfortable that way, you can do that first and just avoid the stem. But that being said, it is pretty easy to add the stem in second because we're just gonna kind of avoid certain areas and all we really need to be able to do is make a line. So on the left, I have some of the ones that are just purple in the center. I made my own reddish pink color with the colors that are in the set and then dropped some of that yellow or orange right in the center along the opening of the mouth. And then on the right, I'm doing one of the oranges and dropping reds in on the bottom part of it. And finally, it's time to add in the leaves and the center stem. Now you can definitely pick one of the colors straight from here because there's a huge selection of different greens, but I always like to modify mine a little bit. So I'm gonna mix up a couple of these greens together, maybe even throw in some blue or something like that just to kind of make the green that I want. And to start that center area, what I actually want to start by doing is again, I wanna hint to some more of those buds that are yet to bloom. The further up the stalk they are, the smaller they are, and the more immature they are. So there might be a couple at the top that are still completely encased in the greenery. Then as we move down that stalk, some of those buds that maybe are starting to pop out, we want to give them that little pocket. They basically have like a little pocket they sit in and attach it to the center stem. I'm going to bring that center stem down and I'm going to avoid the areas I've already painted. Again, adding that little pocket for each one of those flowers to sit in and connecting it to that center stem. At the bottom, I'm gonna add in my leaves. And the good news is leaves on Snapdragons are super duper simple, so you can just take advantage of placing the tip of your brush down and then applying more and more pressure as you drag it along, which will give you a really nice leaf shape. You can wiggle it a bit if you wanna get some more motion. And if you wanna create some variation, you can also change the green up that you're using a little bit as you move through those leaves. There's a lot more that you could do to this painting to try to make it look a little more realistic, but I love some of these simple and quick watercolor florals, and this is kind of the style that I want to show for this one. Also in painting this, I realized I forgot to extend the sides of the orange one, so I just went ahead and washed my brush off and used some water in there to kind of brush it and soften the edge and create a little bit of that cone shape. And while I'm finishing up the stems here, another thing you can kind of pay attention to, you can kind of see how dry or how wet things are based on how recently I painted them and their appearance. And just notice when I add in that center stem and those little pockets, how sometimes it bleeds in and sometimes it doesn't. Depending on your style and what you like, you might want it to bleed more or less. So just start to pay attention to that. And as I finish these up, you can kind of see these work pretty good for painting with watercolor. There are certain colors that seem to be better than other ones. The purple is a really pretty color, but it definitely separates as it dries. And the center one with kind of the pinky red, it gets a lot less vibrant as it dries. The orange one, I'm fairly impressed with the color and they bled okay together. After painting these, again, this confirms my suspicions. These are okay paints. They're not great paints, but they definitely work in a pinch or on a budget. Now that you've seen the test in full, put in the comments what you think about these. Are these something you'd like to use on a regular basis? Are these just for fun projects? Are these for kids? Let me know your thoughts. If there are any other watercolors you'd like me to test, I'd love to know about that in the comments. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. I hope that you have a magically creative day.